Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionist once again, continuing our rheumatology series of lectures. At last, we're now discussing diseases. After talking about labs for bazillion lectures, today we'll start with osteoarthritis, also known as degenerative joint disease. We have primary and secondary. Primary, by and large, is a disease of the elderly. It's a biomechanical problem, wear and tear plus other stuff. With that being said, now let's get started. This will be the first video about osteoarthritis. It's an introduction, but for you to understand the introduction, you gotta watch my previous videos first. They are in my rheumatology playlist. If you have really watched my previous video, the rest of rheumatology is a piece of cake. It's history. It's really easy. But before we start, if you want to get a case sent to your inbox every week for free, go to patreon.com forward slash metacosis and follow me there. Following me on Patreon costs you nothing. Right now, there are 140 people of you following me on Patreon, getting a case every week. So thank you for that. And you can be the next one. As I've said before, rheumatological diseases are either monoarticular, oligoarticular, and polyarticular. Monoarticular, one joint, oligo two to four, and poly, more than five. How about osteoarthritis? Where does it fit? Osteoarthritis can be mono, and it can be oligoarthritis. There is a very rare variant of osteoarthritis that's poly, but this is the exception rather than the rule. Because osteoarthritis, by and large, is a local problem. It's a biomechanical problem. Mechanical here refers to wear and tear. So it's not a systemic problem like rheumatoid arthritis. It's a local problem by and large. I've told you before that joint diseases can be non-inflammatory, inflammatory, septic, or hemorrhagic. Osteoarthritis is a non-inflammatory arthritis. Now, granted, you can find some white blood cells in the joint of a patient of osteoarthritis, but the systemic inflammation is not what drives osteo. What drives osteo is a biomechanical process, wear and tear, and some more. You can divide arthritis into non-inflammatory and inflammatory among others, non-inflammatory such as osteo, inflammatory such as rheumatoid. So in a sense, osteoarthritis is a wrong name because it ends in an itis. And some of you think that just because it ends in an itis, it means there is a systemic inflammation. Yeah, for most diseases this is correct, but for osteo it's a wrong name. We should call it osteoarthropathy, but no one listens to me anymore, so we'll just call it osteoarthritis and we gotta live with it. Here is a list of the non-inflammatory and here's the, a list of the inflammatory. Please don't forget the osteo is non-inflammatory. Rheumatological diseases could involve the DIP, which is, stands for the distal intraphalangeal joints, or MCP, which are the metacarpophalangeal joints, wrist, which is here, and the first metatarsophalangeal in your foot, and this is the famous gout. Osteoarthritis involves the DIP. It can also involve the PIP, which are the proximal intraphalangeal joints, these little guys. What's the most commonly involved joint in osteoarthritis? And the answer is CMC1. What the what? First, carpometacarpal. So here are your nice carpal bones, and here's the metacarpal. First is here, so first carpometacarpal is this one. I don't just make videos, I write notes, so I can give you the Perfectionals Ultimate Notebook plus 20 lymphoma cases plus 25 bleeding cases at patreon.com forward slash metacosis. Arthritis can be divided into acute and chronic. Where do you think osteo fits? And the answer is osteoarthritis is a chronic arthritis and that's a big deal. So let's say that we aspire a joint of a patient with osteoarthritis and we found some white blood cells. Do you think the predominant white blood cells are gonna be neutrophils or lymphocytes? And the answer is lymphocytes because it's an, a, a chronic process. Lymphocytes for chronic, neutrophils for acute. Since osteo is chronic, lymphocytes will predominate. Arthritis can be asymmetrical or symmetrical. Osteoarthritis is asymmetrical for two important reasons. Number one, 
in many cases it's a monoarthritis if you are mono if you involve one joint by definition you are asymmetrical the second joint the second reason is that osteoarthritis is wear and tear the tires on your car do not wear out at the same rate some of us are right-handed some of us are left-handed so the trauma the wear and tear on the joints isn't symmetrical it's purely physical and mechanical same thing with soccer slash football. Some of us use the right foot, some of us use the left foot. The trauma, the wear and tear are not equal on both sides. That's why osteoarthritis is asymmetrical. For the last time, rheumatological disease non-inflammatory such as osteo, inflammatory such as rheumatoid. Non-inflammatory such as osteo have no cardinal signs of inflammation because there is no inflammation. It's asymmetric because you don't wear out your tires at the same rate. Worse in the evening, as the day progress, you're moving more. More movement, more wear and tear, more wear and tear, more osteo. ESR and CRP are within normal limit, and so is every acute phase reactant, because it's a non-inflammatory arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is the exact opposite. So now we have one single premise. Osteoarthritis is non-inflammatory, it's biomechanical in other words. From this one premise, we can deduce several conclusions that you will be shocked. So it's not inflammatory, right? Right. No cardinal signs of inflammation. Yep. No constitutional symptoms. No fever, weight loss, night sweat, etc. because it's not inflammatory. Joint pain worsens with use. As the day progresses, you get more pain. It's worse in the evening because it's a biomechanical. More wear and tear. It's asymmetrical because it's a wear and tear. No elevation of ESR or CRP because it's a normal wear and tear. ESR is normal, CRP is normal, CBC is normal, CMP is normal because it's a non-inflammatory arthritis. It's a disease of the elderly because you have been using your joints your entire life. Also, the muscles in the elderly are weaker. So the poor joints are bearing the entire weight and those muscles are not helping. Let's continue osteoarthritis, the most common type of joint disease. Why is that? Because some of us may have positive rheumatoid factors, most of us have negative one. Some of us may have the anti-CCP antibodies, but most of us don't. But every single one of us will have wear and tear. It's called physics, baby. There is nothing mechanical that doesn't wear out. So let's say, just for the sake of the argument, that Elon Musk introduced his new electric truck and told you this truck will keep working forever. Forever. You don't have to maintain it. You don't have to take it to the shop. It will not break down. Wrong. I'm just supposing. Nothing that's mechanical doesn't break down. It doesn't exist. Just ask any engineer, or any doctor for that matter, it's called osteoarthritis. It's biomechanical, therefore, it will affect the weight-bearing joints, hips and knee. So osteoarthritis is more likely to be in the lower extremities than the upper extremities, and now we know why. It's biomechanical, therefore, obesity is a risk factor. Why? There is a heavier load on your weight-bearing joints. Manual occupations are risk factors, manual labor. So manual labor, constant squatting, bending, standing, all of these are risk factors. Trauma is a risk factor. Let me give you an example. Let's say that we have two cars. Here is car A, which runs on very smooth roads. These roads are excellent. Then we have car B. All right, car B runs on roads that are horrible many bumps potholes damaged road because the mayor and the governor cannot balance the budget this car which is car b is gonna wear out faster than car a why not we have wear and tear here and wear and tear here yes but we have trauma here and no trauma there Next, since osteoarthritis is wear and tear, it's a chronic disease. It's an insidious disease, very slow, it takes a lot of time. Since it's non inflammatory, joint fluid analysis will give you a white blood cell that's more than 200 because less than 200 is normal and osteo is not normal. But it's less than 2000 because 2000 or higher is inflammatory and osteoarthritis is non inflammatory. Please watch my previous videos on joint fluid analysis. So, white blood cells between 200 and 2000. 
predominantly the lymphocytes because it's a chronic process. It's called osteoarthritis. It's biomechanical. It's non-inflammatory. Do you expect synovitis? I don't. How about morning stiffness? Yes, there is morning stiffness, but it lasts less than 30 minutes. Like your old car in the winter with no antifreeze. At the beginning, it's very hard to start. It's very hard to move. But once the oil hits the engine and the bleep hits the fan, it starts moving and shifting like the dream. It lasts less than 30 minutes, then after that, it's all hunky-dory. But haven't you told us like five minutes ago that in osteoarthritis the pain worsens as the day progresses? Yes, I said the pain worsens as the day progresses, but not the stiffness. So if we have a graph here, the first question when you draw a graph is what are the axes? So on the y-axis we have risk of osteoarthritis and here we have the age in years. Before 50 years of age, your risk of osteoarthritis is linear. It's an arithmetic relation. Example, 2x, 1.5x, 1.3x, those are arithmetic relations. But after the age of 50, it turns into a geometrical or exponential relation. Woo! Exponential increase in your risk of getting osteoarthritis. Instead of 2x, we have x power 2. I still remember mathematics. That's awesome. That's why, my friends, osteoarthritis, the primary one, is a disease of the elderly. So please don't make fun of grandma because one day you'll be there. It's just a matter of time. Meanwhile, if you're healthy today, be grateful and try to help grandma. Why shouldn't I help grandpa? Yes, you should help grandpa too, but osteoarthritis is commoner in women. Every single illustration here has a purpose. What's the ultimate treatment to your wearing tires? Replace them. What's the ultimate treatment of your wearing joint? Replace them. Called joint replacement, what the sophisticated surgeons called arthroplasty. Because plasty means synthesis, formation, creation, and arthro means joint. If you watch my videos for a long time, you know that I'm a visual learner. You can tell from my notes, by the way. If you love mnemonics, especially pictures mnemonics, please go to Picmonic and see the link in the description below. It's a great way to remember and memorize medicine. They are not a sponsor of this video. I'm just recommending them to you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notification. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 90 cases on Facebook. Follow me on all of these platforms. If you want more cases, go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. If you want to download my notes in PDF forms, go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Thank you guys for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. And as always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. Until next time.